We have taken. Well, we already took to the hospital once. Before we begin, we're, we're going to yeah. recognize the land on which we're sitting now. Let us acknowledge we are meeting on land that is the traditional homeland of the Ojibwe Nation and the Huron Windat Nation. We seek a new relationship with the original peoples of this land. We're grateful for the opportunity to gather here and we thank all the generations of people who have taken care of this area. For many years, the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe peoples, under the One Dish, One Spoon Treaty, have sought to walk gently on this land. In Bracebridge, Gravenhurst, Bala, the Skoka Lakes, Windermere, we acknowledge the, the territory of the Wata Mohawk Chippewa peoples. We recognize and deeply appreciate their historic connection to this place. We've been given the duty to live in balance and harmony with each other and with all living things. So let us bring our minds and our hearts together as we appreciate the events of this week and those to come. So you'll notice the mic isn't really live. It's more just like a talking stick. Um, and, uh, but it is recording, so that's why it's important for us to also be holding on to it as we speak. I hope you can hear us okay. I think, um, uh, Morgan, you speak first. Me speak first, yeah. This is the first time in my home. <laughs> <laughs> I've never got the last word either. <laughs> well, thank you for coming. She said, Oh, Field's Day over 98. This is the beginning of 100 years ago they were talking about Chautauqua on this land. And I really want to give thanks for, for this day, and I want to give thanks for the caretakers who have this land now. They're yeah, allowing us to use it. And we intend to use it for the best purposes. And I'm looking forward to the sharing and the teaching and the learning that happen as we move forward, as this, this earth wakes up to a new world, I think, as we, we see ourselves here in person, live, for the first time in, in a year. And hopefully this world is going to wake up to, to a, new, a new day and a new dawn. And I'm hoping that we can all share and be part of that and, and come together and learn and, and experience together. That's what we're here for. So enjoy the week. I, I'm, I'm here, I guess, mostly. My background is entertainment, and uh, I think that what you're going to see here in the, in the form of entertainment over the next nine days is going to be uh, pretty remarkable. There are uh, Charleston Opera, Mississauga Symphony, blues, jazz, folk, rock. I mean, it, it, it's a full plate of anything you really want to listen to in, in that form, and I think there are other folks here who are going to uh, speak to you of other genres, and uh, I'll leave that up to them because I uh, see Gail still this time. <laughs> Thank you, and enjoy the week. Okay. Um, yes, I guess I'll be uh, another genre. I'll be visual arts, and... Uh, I'll talk about the gallery and some of the artists that will be here. I have a few notes, if, if you don't mind if I just uh, read it so I don't miss anything. As the group of seven interpreted this part of Canada and helped shape the nature's identity 100 years ago, artists today reflect new contemporary stories of the land, the people and their relationships, all our relations. We look back on our past, our own family histories, and the significance of our relationships as we learn and heal and move forward, embravened and committed to the creation of a new cultural identity of respect, compassion, and unity. We see through artists' eyes this transition we are all part of as it, we are creating and trusting the path. The gallery in the woods over there it showcases these reflections by local and in international artists. The first show includes works by Paul Schilling and Ted Fullerton. Paul's right over here and um, he's, 
he's going to be happy to uh, to talk about his work if you want to join him afterwards at the gallery. And uh, Sean William Dawson is also here, and he's a colleague of Ted Fullerton. Uh, Ted wasn't able to come today because he's involved in the show that Paul and he are um, have at the uh, Mississauga Art Gallery called Darkness Does Not Belong in the Shadows. But we're really happy to have some of their recent work that represents the same essence. The works speak to the search for truth and reconciliation, personally and collectively. This exhibition, as I mentioned, also includes John William Dawson's work and a couple of my own small pieces which reflect, um, I believe, all of our work reflects our own family backgrounds and our search for truth. The artist will be available after this, as I mentioned, uh, at the gallery if you wish to connect with them directly. So tomorrow, um, and I think Greg and Sue Hindle are here, and um, they're going to, to also be installing some pieces. In the meantime, as we await the work from the grandfather of the filmmaker of the first hot doc, um, Vladimir uh, Vorkin, and uh, his grandson will be bringing his work and we will be installing it in the gallery so that in conjunction with the film, you'll be able to see this, these amazing paintings that he, he was uh, searching about. Um, and so also the filmmaker, who is Roman Lapshkin, did I say that right? Lapshin. Lapshin. Um, and the executive producer, Danny Weber, will also be here after the film to answer questions. And I guess we'll probably hear more about the films from uh, perhaps Sean. Um, so then, uh, as the rest of the mm -hmm. artists in residence mm -hmm. who are doing workshops join us, their work will also be displayed in the gallery. And um, so that'll include Greg and Sue. Uh, Greg and Sue will be coaching participants on plein air as they develop acrylic landscape paintings uh, starting today at 1 and also Monday at 1. Uh, Melanie Siegel is arriving in a few days and she will be uh, sharing techniques and insights into the beauty and meditative qualities of textile arts on Tuesday and Wednesday. And Christine Hume will be joining us later in the week making mosaics um, with uh, treasured bits and creating signifiers and wave wayfinders on Thursday and Friday. The beautiful and diverse array of painted paddles will also be on display for last bids. You may have noticed in the social media a really awesome uh, painted paddle auction and we thank all of the artists, who are many, um, who participated in that and helped us out with that. Yikes. Sorry. Okay. Um, Sean William Dawson is going to be back. He's going to bring his printing press on Saturday and guide us in creating Intellio uh, prints and he's going to bring his button making equipment for the kids and, and those that are young at heart on Sunday to the family art party. Um, and Michael Benson will be joining him uh, as well as many of the other artists coming back for that. So we just want to thank all the amazing artists who have made this festival so special. Um, and welcome to, to all of you. Um, I, I also want to uh, express our sincere appreciation again to Don and, and um, Karen uh, for this beautiful property and uh, Fednor Canadian Heritage and the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries as well as the Township of Muskoka Lakes for their ongoing support without whom we would not be able to uh, to do these sorts of things. Um, and uh, I don't know whether the mayor is here. Did I see him? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Would Would you like to uh, say something? In the of <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, very thankful to be here and be part of this. This is truly a uh, hundred years, and we need to continue to look back to understand where we've come and the wrongs in many respects in truth and reconciliation. Um, your art is brilliant. 
And uh, thank you for that, and thank you for sharing parts of your story. So I, I don't want to say any more, but uh, thank you for including us. We have a number of counselors around here, um, and always happy to be part of uh, Muskoka Lakes culture. Um, are we introducing Nora next? Okay, so <laughs> Nora Fountain <laughs> is going to be speaking about uh, the literary event. Thank you so much, Nora. Good morning, everyone. Uh, some of you may know me from the Muskoka Lakes Chamber of Commerce, but in my past life, I was a journalist, and I continue to this day to be a ghostwriter. I have at least one best-selling book that I can't talk about. But, uh, but really, I know that the reason why I've been asked to do this is that it's hard to get my nose out of a book. I've been asked to describe what's on deck for a celebration of authors during the festival. As you know, we're on land in 1916-1917, Elgin House and the Windermere House were, that area was known as the summer literary capital of Canada. I think maybe even of North America. So people would gather at the shores of Lake Rosso to meet and hear from the authors of the day. And part of that tradition was the Reading Circle, which aimed to introduce and advance the works of Canadian authors. And that's one, one of the reasons why we're all in a circle today. It is my honor to continue that tradition today, to tell you about the Muskoka authors we will celebrate this year during the Muskoka Chautauqua Festival. We kick things off with one of our most well-known historians, Patrick Boyer. Tomorrow, Sunday, August 8th at 4 p.m. I hope you'll join us as we look back at this very land we stand on. And what was happening here 100 years ago? And how appropriate as we celebrate 100 years of Muskoka Chautauqua being first incorporated in 1921, although there were meetings before that. On Monday, August 9th at 4 p.m., and all our literary events are happening at 4 p.m., so you don't forget, <laughs> please attend the book launch of Treasured Islands with Generations of Muskoka Memory. So many great island stories are told in that book. And speaking at that event, uh, we're featuring John R. Moses, Carol Moore Ede, and Alan Manchi. Then it's my turn to moderate our literary panel on Thursday, August 12th, again at 4 p.m. We'll do a deep dive into three books by authors Susan Nair, Lynn Golding, and Paul Feist. You'll discover that one of our authors has a deep, almost disturbing obsession with serial killers. <laughs> Another completes a trilogy of life before, during, and after World War One, And the third is a coming-of-age story. Somewhat autobiographical. Yeah, I think I have that autobiographical. <laughs> Perhaps. Uh, by Paul Feist. Uh, it's about a young man flying the uh, St. Lawrence River and the oceans from the rock right down to South America. So I promise you're going to want to read their works after you meet with us. And I warn you that there might be some spoilers too, but I will do my best to try to avoid those. And our reading circle comes full circle on Friday, August 13th with Richard Weiser, author of The Real Mystery of Tom Thompson. You thought you knew all there was to know about Tom Thompson? Of course, none of us do, so think again. I salute all our writers. I can't wait to hear from all of them. I can't read, I can't wait to read some more from all of them. And you can still register for these events through MuskokaChautauqua.com. Thank you, and happy 100th Muskoka Chautauqua. I also just wanted to acknowledge, um, well, you, you heard from our board chair, Glad Price, but other board members are here as well, Beverly Robertson for one, who, who is going to be um, providing a wonderful evening with uh, friends, a folk evening. Diane um, adamson Verdar, our uh, opera Muskoka champion, um, and you know she's brought that aspect to the festival for so many years. So thank you uh, very much, Diane. Um, who else? Sue, uh, Sue Hindle is also on our board. And um, I think that's it. Yep, okay, great. Uh, so are you doing the hot dogs or? Yes. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Sean Dempsey. I'm Dale's son. Um, I've been privileged to work with uh, a great group of people, uh, volunteers, supporters, in putting together this year's festival. Um, as you've heard uh, from the literary program, the visual arts program, the music program, um, there's a ton of stuff going on. I'm just going to fill in the rest of the blanks. 
Um, this year we're proud to uh, announce our partnership with the Hot Docs Canadian Documentary uh, Film Festival. It's the largest international uh, film festival and they're bringing four films to us this year. Uh, starting on Sunday night, a film called Portrayal. <clears throat> I've seen and screened all of these films and chose them specifically for this group and this place. Portrayal is about a grandson, a <clears throat> searching for his thousands of his grandfather's missing paintings, uh, family secrets, intrigue, whodunit, uh, it's phenomenal. And then uh, right after that screening, um, Roman uh, Lapshin, who's the subject of the film, and uh, Danny Weber, the executive producer, will be here for a live Q&A. So for any of those of you who've been to a documentary film festival, those post-screening uh, Q&As are incredible uh, because you're able to ask real questions about, uh, about their story. And as my mom said, uh, his grandfather's paintings, uh, for the first time ever live, will be in our, uh, our art gallery, um, both uh, Sunday and Monday. And you can talk to, uh, talk to Roman, his mother, and, uh, and view the paintings. <clears throat> Thursday, August 10th, uh, there's a lot of exciting things going on. First of all, um, meet the orchestra with the Mississauga Symphony Orchestra at 4 o'clock. Um, we have the concertmaster, so the uh, lead violin, Corey Gemmel, will be here uh, from the Mississauga Symphony Orchestra as well as the conductor uh, and accompanied by Jennifer Tung. And they'll be talking, it's a lecture slash performance, and they'll be talking to us about the violin, the craft. Uh, and then later on at 8.30 p.m., uh, the film, The Quest for Tonewood. This is an, uh, an international film of, of a, about a luthier, a violin maker, searching the world for the perfect tree to build uh, the perfect violin. And there's no better place to watch this film than uh, amongst the trees. The Q&A after that session is, uh, is with a local uh, luthier, David Kirtan, and he's gonna be talking about his own personal quest to find that perfect tree to build, uh, to build the best instrument. Thursday, August 12th, uh, Dead Man's Switch. This is a crypto mystery um, <clears throat> all about a, uh, uh, a Canadian-based cryptocurrency exchange and the founder who uh, disappeared and mysteriously died uh, and millions of dollars of uh, people's money gone missing. Uh, we're welcoming a Globe and Mail reporter for that post Q&A session. <laughs> Uh, to discuss that. She's also in the film. And then finally, uh, Saturday, August 14th, this film won a number of uh, awards at the Hot Docs Film Festival. It's called Heller Clean Water. It takes place in Newfoundland and one individual's quest to clean up the harbors of Newfoundland and what we can uh, learn about it. So the Hot Docs uh, Film Festival uh, piece is incredible. It will be right here, 8.30 p.m. every, every second night on a, on a large screen. We will have a, a bar open uh, from about four o'clock on every day with um, uh, products, uh, local and Ontario-based products, Muskoka Brewery, uh, Sapsucker be beverages, as well as some snacks. So that will uh, accompany um, your enjoyment. Uh, also, lastly, uh, there is a daily morning uh, movement and meditation session happening just down at the Maple Leaf Dock. Uh, and uh, that runs from 8.30 to 9.30, hosted by uh, Annette Newton, who is actually the great-granddaughter of one of the Tobins from Tobin Island. So there's a, there's a lovely, lovely local connection. Muskoka Chautauqua is about celebrating arts and culture and really the local heritage. Um, for a lot of artists and performers, for those who were at the big band last night, a lot of these people have not um, painted with or performed in front of live audiences for 18 months. It's very important and part of our mandate to bring audiences like you and artists like you together. And it's very important that all of our artists get paid for their work. Uh, it's been a tough uh, pandemic for a lot of people, but especially artists. That's part of the reason why we offer the entire festival as pay what you wish. We want to make sure it's very accessible to uh, local residents, year-round residents, seasonal residents, and in the coming years, more tourists to the, uh, to the area. So you will notice when you bought your, uh, when you registered for your ticket, there's an opportunity to donate there. And in the program at the back, there's also a, a spot for donation. 
So uh, again, a wonderful, exciting, uh, exciting program we have set up for you. We're here uh, every day. There's information at the uh, at the box office, uh, and we're excited to welcome you. Finally, I'm going to pass the microphone over to Karen Lang, and she's going to talk about some of the uh, Windermere history project, uh, and she will fill us in on the mystery behind the red cloth. <laughs> Thank you. Kind of the long-awaited <laughs> <laughs> unveiling um, two years ago. I'm going to get to that. I'd really like to talk uh, a little bit about the Windermere History Project. I think it's important to this community from many, many um, aspects. Um, it, we started the Windermere History Project. It was initiated by the Muskoka branch of the Architectural Conservancy of Ontario. And we felt that we had to start looking at the history, the stories, the people, the place here in Windermere um, has made a significant contribution. And we had a wonderful partnership, and still do, with uh, two other organizations, Scopa Chautauqua, who've been very supportive, clearly because of their history, and also the archives of the Windermere Women's Institute. Uh, it's one of the only remaining um, women's institutes in this area. Um, all the small towns in all the area and all over Canada really. Uh, so very few of them left, but uh, this one has a really unique archives and and nicely they were thrilled to work with us and we've been working collaboratively with them and um, our goal has been to gather the history, the stories uh, of the you know first settlers, the first explorers here. Um, the people that really settled the area, and we focused on Windermere, uh, and it's continued from the standpoint of not just the locals, but also their connection to the early cottagers here, first tourists here. And um, you know what we have in Windermere, it's it's really incredible. It's there is a sense of place here. There's a sense of purpose, and um, there's an incredible sense of community. And uh, we're really working yeah. hard and. I think we're, you know, building momentum and what, what can happen in, in all these communities, whether it's your small one within your, you know, small town or bay or within the larger concept of district. Um, we're, we're all in a community and we're all, I, I like to think, working together. Um, in speaking about this mystery behind the red chair, I think um, this was this mural. And it's, uh, it really was kind of brought to fruition by Muskoka Chautauqua in the sense that uh, we're working collaboratively with the community. We've uh, recruited artists and um, I'm going to have them come up. Uh, we actually wanted to be come up right now. Go ahead. I think we need to, I'd like to introduce both the artists that uh, that really uh, are, are instrumental in this, in, in this pulling this together. Uh, the, uh, the first artist, because there's a progression, is Barbara Clunder. And um, Barbara is a Toronto artist. You can see by her jacket, very talented, but she's talented in many, many ways. She's been an illustrator, designer, graphic designer, uh, teacher, textile designer. Um, it's pretty much you've covered the gamut. Um, beautiful painter. She's taught at EGO. Um, I mean, I. That's I, enough. That's enough. <laughs> So uh, Barbara did, this is a copy and there's, you're welcome to take one, she created a very stylish and very um, signature Barbara Plunder map of Windermere. So it's very whimsical, it I think speaks to um, the creativity behind this, this uh, community. And then, uh, with this great work in mind, I moved over to Audrey Ma, the talented uh, contemporary ceramic artist, and said, what can we do with this beautiful drawing? What can we create? And her concept was a mural. And now, surfing back to the sense of community that's alive and well here, we put a shout out to a local people, cottagers, people staying at the hotel to come, hotels, um, to come and partake in this collaborative project. So this was cut into 48 
so I'm going to ask the two of them to, to carefully remove, and you can see the finished product. Visitors who were staying locally. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got visitors who come for the event. And there's a 91 year old who will come back when she's 101 and she will tell point to her one that she's going <laughs> to. I promise. <laughs> Would you like to come and point to yours? <laughs> I see several of them. Oh, okay. They didn't see not just one. And uh, I think it improves the original a lot. <laughs> no, I love how a cartoon can transform through a totally different medium. And it's much better at this size and at this medium and it's a community map that people can refer to and hopefully find fun facts about this amazing project and i want to say something about the the slogan naturally creative couldn't be better two of the best words to encompass the entire project of being up north in this incredible location making stuff. So I just want to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the Oh, and I want to thank Karen. I wouldn't be part of this unless Karen had asked me how many years ago to come up and do a drawing course, and then the next year I came up and did a paper cut course. And I got to stay at the Baldwin's Hotel, which was charming. And, uh, but without Karen and Don's help around this whole idea, I don't think we'd be here today. So I want to thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, just before we go, uh, we just have one thank you uh, for everyone. As Karen said, this is all about community, and, uh, and arts and culture are the things that often bring, and heritage often bring community together. So we're excited that you've joined us to uh, help celebrate our, our 100th anniversary. And I'm going to pass the microphone uh, to Gary for one last one. Just one quick last one, maybe two. Uh, I have a, a pin that I'd like to give over. One is the Stock of Hawk anniversary pin. And so before you leave, uh, I'd like you to have one of those. I just, I just wanted to add that you're talking my smart consideration. Those are very personal issues, but those are issues and reconciliation within ourselves. We can reconcile within ourselves. So on your way out, grab a, grab a pin. Thank you for being uh, part of this. Again, lots of exciting stuff going on this week. I would say that a third to a half of our events are, are sold out, uh, which is amazing. Um, but uh, we do have a wait list, and once we get the chairs set up here, we'll see exactly how many people we can, uh, we can get here safely. So um, please register, um, please get involved, and we're really excited to have you here. Thank you. Thanks.